good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world listening, and welcome to Ticket to Life. I am Henry, and thank you for allowing me into your life. Uh, konnichiwa, hello to my listeners in Japan. Um, I really appreciate that very much. But before we start, I like to always mention, or try to mention, I have to state a disclaimer (laughs) for my own benefit uh, that I am not a doctor or a therapist. I'm just Henry and these are my opinions and thoughts. So um, as many of you know, I love football. That's our weekend. I mean, Sunday church and football, literally all day long. (laughs) Well, I don't know how many of you saw the... um, 49ers and uh, Eagles game last week. Uh, It it was uh, pretty crazy that the Eagles lost. Not one of uh, my favorite teams. Uh, I hate to, when a player gets hurt or anything, of course, you know, I'm a number one Dallas Cowboy fan, but also now for Kansas City Chiefs and Atlanta is making a a move into my life. So I'm going to have to get an Atlanta jersey, Atlanta Falcons jersey. But anyway, where I'm getting at, you know, they have such different types of relationships in football. They have the good, the bad, and the ugly. But it was pretty crazy. I mean, that a player and an um, security official, I believe he was, got kicked out. Now, I, I am one of my past podcasts. I thought I have mentioned, I've never seen so many uh, fights or shoving in football as I have this year. So I think the NFL needs to step it up and talk to these players. And yeah, they're, they're ejecting them when, when it's a pretty bad thing that they've done, but it's just gotten crazy. And like I said, there's always bullies everywhere, even on the football field. So it's a game. I know some are getting paid millions, but still it's a game. You're, you're men, grown men. Let's stop with the pushing and the shoving and, Play the game, enjoy the game, especially for your fans, especially for those fans buying your merchandise. Uh, They want to see a good game, but they don't need to see that because, of course, kids are watching that. Uh, so, you know, they hit, that's a good type of relationship with a parent and a child. They start watching football together and stuff. But anyway... Back to today's podcast. I am talking about relationships. I'm trying to ease into that. So how many have you, so have you ever been in a relationship? I shall say, how many of you have been in good and bad relationships? Of course, we've all have been in good and bad relationships. Now, I don't mean only a love relationship. I am talking about friendships, family, co-workers, the toxic and abusive uh, relationship, the intimate relationships, the platonic, the rebound, the the situationships. And one of my favorite relationships is with a pet. (laughs) And I'll talk about all that in a little bit. But, um, situationships is something I'm going, I've got a list, so I'm going to try to stick to this list so everything's in order. Um, But a love relationship is one that we, or most of us, have had at least once in our life, or we thought it was the love of our life, but later on found out that it wasn't. And now you are no longer in that relationship, and now you may be in a rebound relationship because you don't want to be alone. And usually this is a wise thing to do and that's not do it. Only because it's not fair to you, but it's not fair to the person you're rebounding with. Trust me on this. You will be okay if your heart is broken you will be fine. Well, I know this from, from past experiences. But how do you know this? How do you know you will be? You just have to trust your gut. You have to keep going on with life. You can't allow one person to just put that knife in your heart. You just got to take it out and keep going. Your heart will heal. You won't forget it but your heart will heal. And you, going on rebound, that's usually, you know, you go find someone that, you know, they're lonely and you're lonely, so why not? 
I don't recommend this, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. No, 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 not that tunnel. <laughs> don't go, don't follow that light. The tunnel of life. And it is a new beginning. And, and you need to look for that light because you get the chance to put all that sadness and badness behind you. And try your best not to dwell on the past. Of course, easier said than done. Because it has happened and there are no redos in life. I can tell you there are no redos. There's, there's no making up for any mistakes. So if you are going through a sad relationship at this time, then you, you need to know that you're going to be okay. You will. Trust me. I, I, my first marriage did not work out and I thought, oh, it's the end of the world, but it wasn't <laughs> and I'm fine. Uh, but just to let you know, if you are going through at that time, you're going to be okay. This, this is Henry telling me, this is such a mother thing. You will be fine. Um, but having a, the, the love relationship, those are just the best. If you find that special someone, you know, just remember, treat them the way you want to be treated. Of course, then we are leading to the friendship relationships. Now, a true friend is someone that you can literally tell anything and they understand what you may be going through and they won't laugh at your failures. They won't make fun of you. They will empathize with you. And someone that you can literally call in the middle of the night and you know, no matter what, they will be there for you. I like to call these friends that I have my 3 a.m. friends because I know that if I was in need of something, I could pick up the phone and I may not even talk to them once a month. I may not talk to them for months, but I know that they're there. Now, these friends are really hard to find. So once you find them, you need to hold on to them. Now, someone, these are friends that you can share happy moments, sad moments, and that's great. And they can be a male or a female. You need, like I said, hold on to them and they will always be there for you and you will always be there for them. Now, this also goes with family relationships. Some of us have the most wonderful families known to mankind, but I will tell you, there is no such thing as a perfect family. They may think it, they might believe it in their head, but there's just no such thing as perfect. Now, some of you may believe that the most perfect family is a certain friend or family member, they look just like, oh, everything goes right in their life because they post all the wonderful events on social media. Now, I had a youth director friend once, and she shared with me a very uh, important statement that has always stayed with me because this was like years ago that she told me this. And all families are dysfunctional. I will repeat, all families are dysfunctional. Now, now, don't, don't get upset and say, not my family. Yes, we all have some sort of dysfunctional thing in our families. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. But you know, there's always someone in the family that has a deep, dark family secret. Now, in my family, about six years ago, we found out that some of our family members had some secrets. And how did we find out on Ancestry.com? No, this is not a plug for Ancestry.com. And be careful for what you're looking for, because yikes. Luckily, there were no murderers or anything like that. Phew. But just know, all families can be, it's, it's just like in life. You choose what to say, and you choose who to be with. And if there's a negative person in your family or your friends, then you need to just, you can keep that relationship, but just keep them at a, at a arm's length. You don't need to be that close to them. Now there is the toxic and abusive relationship. You may know someone who has been in one of these relationships or you yourself may be in one of these. I hope you're not because that goes on part of both of the partners. It's emotionally and physically harmful. Verbally, physically harmful. Now, these relationships are usually very destructive. And to both the individuals, honestly. But 
it's more destructive for a family. If you aren't in any type of situation like this and there are children involved, I always like to say, make a plan. You need to get your kids out of there. Oh, I won't survive without my partner. Yes, you will. And your kids do not need to grow up in that type of household. I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your life. I'm just trying to help you with your life. And if you are in one of these relationships, here is the number to the National Domestic Violence Hotline. And they are available to you 24-7, 365 days a year. Give them a call. It is 1-800-799-SAFE or 1-800-799-7233. Or you can actually text them if you don't want to talk to someone. And that number is 8878. If you know someone that is in danger, don't be the person that says, I don't want to get involved You could literally be saving a life. You could be saving your own life if you pick up the phone and are in one of these relationships. And the holidays are coming around, folks. And for some reason, there is more domestic violence during the holidays. So please, 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 if you know someone, just slip them that number. They don't even know who sent it to them or put it on their desk. Again, you could actually save a life. Now, And a relationship like that can start with intimacy. And there's the the lead up to, I will never leave you. I will never hurt you. And it just happens. Although an intimate relationship, a healthy relationship is good for you. It actually helps reduce uh, distress. And we've, most of us have been in some of those relationships. Now, there are the intimate relationships. Friends with benefits. And I won't go there into an explanation of what that is because I'm pretty sure if you're listening to this, you're an adult. At least I hope you are. Hi, kids, if you're listening. But (laughs) excuse me, although you could be the friend with benefits and that your friend is a mechanic, a professional dancer, and you see the person for and use that person for their talents. Okay, maybe not. Uh, Let's go back to knowing what I'm really talking about. Friends with benefits. Wink, wink. We'll leave it at there because I think we'll leave it right there. So I know you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Of course, there's the co-workers. And co-workers. Now, this is a different type of relationship um, that you can either love or hate. You're probably at work more time than you are with your family during the week. Have you ever thought about that? Hopefully you have at least, uh, or what you can do is at least be kind to them, even if you don't get along with them, because you have to work with them. And there's always pluses to these relationships. And hopefully you might eventually learn to get along or become best friends or enemies. Now, if you get along great with a co-worker, always be cautious of what you say. Because it can come back and bite you on the bottom and then you'll have to get a shovel and dig yourself out of the hole. I know this is horrible, but I have had that kind of relationship where I trusted someone and oops, I said what I shouldn't have. Well, actually, they were my thoughts, but I have a problem of... um, spewing at the mouth. Uh, not bad, but just, I'm all about honesty. (laughs) If it's the truth, it's the truth, but I will speak my mind and uh, sometimes I'm too hasty and it just comes out. So again, being with coworkers, it's, it's kind of a tough type of relationship, especially when you're new and in any workplace, but even to let you know that there are clicks, not just in the workplace, You thought it was over in high school and college, but but guess what? It keeps going on. Even in church, there are cliques in church. (laughs) Yes, even in God's house. Well, with this relationship again, you just have to be careful because some of you see these people five to six days a week and it can be a good thing, but it could be a bad thing. So you may have to learn to bend a little if you want to keep your job. Uh, But that to me, that is that is kind of hard because they become your family. If you get, I mean, it's very uh, rare, I guess, 
because I don't hear about it much, but it's very rare to get in into a job where everybody just gets along. I used to work at a elementary school, and uh, believe it or not, I uh, was there for only six years, but I it was great. It was great, and I still am friends with the people there. I, that was one of those rare occasion opportunities in my life that I loved, and I retired from there, but it was great. And again, I retired, what, 10 years ago, and it's just been great because we still have, not with the entire staff, but the the people there, of course, mostly educators. I love educators because without them, you wouldn't be able to listen to us podcast. You wouldn't have a job. You wouldn't have a uh, be able to go to a workplace to see if you're going to like your coworkers or not. But anyway, that was one of my blessings. But anyway, let's go on to platonic relationships. Now, these are really good friends and usually no attraction to one another. But if you get too close, it could be a mistake or it could be a blessing. Story time. I will share my platonic relationship with my husband. (laughs) We literally were friends for a few years. I mean, several years, actually. And then one day he told me he thought we should start dating. Well, I, I kind of freaked out. No, I really did freak out because I thought, oh, my gosh. Who's he going to replace me with? Because we did any everything together. We told every we told each other anything and everything. And I just, um, I just knew he was going to replace me with another friend. And I was just worried that it it would mess up our entire friendship. Well, I agreed to go on a date, and I, I, I don't. I'm pretty. I'm not sure he must have really loved me. He tried to kiss me, and all I did was literally burst out laughing when he tried to kiss me. I couldn't help it. I was like, I'm kissing my best friend. You don't do that. But he gave me another chance. And 40 years later of marriage, and he doesn't let me forget that I laugh, though. And he likes to tell that story to way too many people. (laughs) But I do have to admit, he is still my go-to guy. So he was right, and I was wrong about us. So I usually don't like to say I'm wrong about things, but I was wrong (laughs) about that. And I'm glad I was wrong. So there is a new type of a relationship and it's uh, used by younger and adults and college kids. And it is called situationship. Have you ever heard of this? It's a romantic or sexual relationship that is um, undefined and they're uh, noncommittal. So they are in a relationship, but it's noncommittal, but more than friends but less than a committed romantic partner. I'm sorry, are you confused? Because when I was listening to this and finding this information, I thought, what? I was thinking that's just too much. So either you're going to be friends with benefits, but I think that's not friends with benefits. I think we need to stop making more words up and either your friends or lovers, and I will accept whatever makes you happy. (laughs) No, no labels. Just let's shoot for happy, happy in our lives. I, I, how does that sound? I think that sounds great, don't you? Let's just be happy <laughs> who we're with, where we're with, and everything. So um, in Japan, there is something called hikamora, hikamori, and it is mostly teens and young adults who become recluse in their parents' homes and unable to go to work for months or years. Now, this is not considered a mental illness. It, it's mental health phenomenal, a mental stress, like no connection with the outside world. Could you imagine not having any contact with anyone other than mom or dad or grandmother or whoever you're living with? Perhaps just staying in a room and getting your food brought to you and not wanting anything to be, uh, wanting anything or to be with anyone. Now, Japan is huge. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's almost the size of California and their population is over 123 million. Now, that's a lot of people. And I can understand about the population and not wanting to be around so many. And there are times I want to be literally just by myself. I, I'm, I, I'm, you know, the me time. I think we all deserve me time, but not 
for my life. I, I, I need people in my life and I need family in my life, but it's, um, I can understand the population thing, as I was saying, and not wanting to be around so many, you know, if it's really crowded, but that must just be so hard to be going through this. Now, this isn't like agoraphobia where people can't leave their homes, although agoraphobia is considered a mental illness. And that's usually caused by depression, anxiety, eating disorders, anorexia, uh, nervosa, bulimia, unhappy relationships where the partner is controlling. But with ag- um, agoraphobia, people do have um, contact just like by phone, computers, having groceries delivered and such. Now, there is a movie and it's called The Woman in the Window. I believe that's the name with Amy Adams and it's on Netflix. The book was written by A.J. Finn. And if you have a chance to um, watch this movie, it's really good if you like thrillers. Um, but it is about a woman who has agoraphobia. And no, I'm not trying to. I, I just need to let you know if I bring up a store or something like Netflix, they're not sponsoring. I'm just telling you where you can see this because it, it's a very, very good movie. And this is just so interesting, this Hikamori. Uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um uh, that it's a sad situation for the entire family. I mean, not just the the individual going through this. So if you do know of anyone, I know I'm always ready. You know, people, if you know that you have a neighbor that you haven't seen, but you know they're in the house, you might want to call um, uh, the the police and they they can do a well check just to make sure they're okay. But, um, trust me, if they have agoraphobia, they are not going to answer the door. <laughs> they will talk through the door. Um, I don't know anyone like that, but watching this movie, but again, I'm a big reader. So if you do have a chance to read the book. It's really good. Um, so, um, back to agoraphobia, although that's not a relationship. I think I was pretty much th- just know that these are people that are very unhappy. Uh, they could be in unhappy relationships or their significant other are not allowing them to leave the house. Again, there we go back to the toxic and abusive relationship. So um, just watch out for your neighbors, especially families. I'm just, I, I just love people. God has blessed me with good people in my life and bad people. And I will continue till the day I die to have good people in my life and bad people. But you can't hold on to the bad people because they may hurt you or hurt your little feelings or hurt, break your heart. But you got to, what's the saying? If you fall off a horse, get back on. I mean, yeah, I guess that's what you got to do. Dust yourself off. Try, try again, you know, because life is short and that's what we just have to do. So um, now one of the best relationships, I say the best for last. Some of you may think I'm crazy, but is having a pet. If you don't have a pet, that's okay. Well, we've always had dogs, <laughs> always. Uh, we're not cat lovers, but we feed a stray cat and he's been coming for two years. So apparently we do care about Salem the cat. He's called Salem. That's his name. Uh, But anyway, I think one of the best relationships you can have is with a pet, a dog, a cat, a bird, a snake, or whatever. I don't know. I used to have birds, uh, little parakeets when I was younger and single and had my dog, Mindy. And you know, um, your pets become part of your family. I had a friend stay with us once and she's a cat lover. And Arthur our dog. He's a jumpy little dog. He's a, he doesn't, when I say jumpy, he likes to jump and he loves to be loved and get him down and he stops eventually. But, and people just know this about Arthur. Um, but she just came out and said, I hate your dog. That's like saying you hate my children. You hate my husband. You hate my family. I mean, because those pets are your family. Of course, the next day she was upset and I'm sorry I said that that was so rude. And I thought, yeah, it was, but so I still talk to that friend, but she hasn't been over in a while. My house is open to her, but nope, (laughs) you don't ever insult someone's pet. I'm just telling you that's, that's an FYI because they are 
family. Um, and the, one of the reasons I think that they do, that is the best relationship people can have is you can come home when you've had a really, really bad day. Or if you're sad. Or if you're happy. And they will listen to you. And they'll sit next to you and they'll cuddle. And they'll never tell you you're wrong. And they will love you unconditionally, no matter what type of person you are. But you better not hurt them. Because I, again, will report you. I'm all about reporting on, on, on dogs and cats. I mean, I, don't get them if you can't take care of them. And I think that's one of the worst gifts you can give kids for Christmas or their birthdays is a pet, especially when they're young. Because first of all, you will be taking care of them, not the child. They just want to love and play with them. But there's a lot of work. It's like raising a child. But anyway, uh, back to pets. I just think they're so good. And, and, and I'm not sure about the birds or the snakes being cuddly. I don't think that would happen. But <laughs> But they will be there. And no matter what, they will always love you and help soothe your soul. When you're down and out and when you're happy, they are just so excited for it. They just know. I think God gave them this instinct to know when you're sad or you're not feeling well. Like Arthur, um, if something's going on, he just knows. Like my son just had a baby, our little grandson, and um, he, um, if the baby's crying, he's just there. Like, what's going on? We need to take care of things. It's usually the female dogs that do that. But Arthur, he's, he's he would have made a great daddy dog. But anyway, um, I, I, that's all I have on relationships. Other than having a relationship with you, the listeners, I want to thank you. And I would like to thank uh, Hype Media Global for airing Ticket to Life on WDJY 99.1 FM Radio Straight Talk. Uh, every Thursday at 7 a.m. Eastern. So Ticket to Life is on 99.1 FM in the metro Atlanta, Georgia area. Or you can listen to it on TuneIn app or the Alexa app or the radio box. Also, you can uh, hear my Ticket to Life podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, you name it. It's pretty much out there. Again, I can't imagine not having any type of relationship with people and with you, the listener. Please remember you are important and you deserve happiness. Be around people who love and care for you. And thank you for listening and go find your blessings. They are around you each and every day. Until next week, this is Henry.